But let me give you another way to respond to this. I think we need to be careful to read the Bible the way it was intended for us to, to read it. And, and people have noted, philosophers, thinkers, historians, uh, people who study the Bible and study ancient languages, study the ancient cultures of biblical times, have, have noticed something that's important when talking about this issue. They've noticed that this expression to destroy, utterly destroy, utterly remove from the land, utterly abolish, these kinds of claims we see in ancient Near Eastern writings are often figures of speech. They are figures of speech? Are you fucking serious right now? Let's just take another look at Joshua 6.21. They devoted the city to the Lord and destroyed with the sword every living thing in it. Men and women, young and old, cattle, sheep, and asses, donkeys. It's kind of hard to explain this with a figure of speech when God is directly commanding every living thing be destroyed with a sword. And then God goes through the various lists of things that should be killed. Let's go ahead and take another look at Numbers 31, 7, and then 17 and 18. They fought against Midian as the Lord commanded Moses and killed every man. Now. Kill all the boys and kill every woman who has slept with a man, but save for yourselves every girl who has never slept with a man. You see, every time God calls for the genocide of an entire group of people, for whatever reason, he specifically lists out who should be killed. And he doesn't use this whole utterly destroy thing to call for the genocide. Whenever the phrase utterly destroys is used, it's typically used to indicate that a group of people should be eradicated through their deaths. God definitely doesn't mean to render them harmless as if you're just taking away their weapons or something. God specifically commands the Israelites to stick a sword into the hearts of babies. How is that not evil? If God is trying to stop evil, maybe he should stop himself. And we kind of see this in the book of Joshua, right? Where a people group is said to be utterly destroyed. Yet we find members of that people group later in biblical history. Well, wait a minute. If you utterly destroyed them, how is it we find them later on in history still present if they had been utterly destroyed? You know, that's an Excellent question there, J-Dubs. Maybe it's because the Bible lied about utterly destroying them. Or it could be the fact that the act of genocide doesn't require the complete destruction of a people group. The intent communicated by God was to eradicate these people from existence. The fact that this represents genocide is not contingent on the success of their actions. Well, it's kind of the same way if I said, like, you know, last night the Lakers killed the Pistons. Well, you mean they actually murdered all the Pistons players? No, no, I mean they destroyed them. They, they killed them. They, what do you mean when you say that? Well, it's an expression, of course, that we understand. Uh, you're twisting words around here. You saying that Team A killed Team B in a uh, sports ball event is not the same thing as God telling the Israelites to kill an entire group of people with a sword. That's just fucking ridiculous, and it makes you look ridiculous. Also, in the Old Testament, there are a lot of incidents of war and murder that the Israelites commit at the behest of God. By the way, which one of those were using figurative language too? Because they all use the same language. Are you special pleading that the instances of genocide are the only instances in which God was using figurative language? Special pleading is a fallacy there, J-Dubs. Seems like an apologist like you would be able to recognize when somebody is special pleading for something. And this expression we see in scripture, especially Paul Copan, the philosopher who's written a book about this, is called, Is God a Moral Monster? He's talked about this expression as an ancient Near Eastern expression, which really means something more akin to, to render them utterly harmless. But that doesn't mean you have to kill every single person in the group to render them utterly harmless. You know, it's really hard to make this particular argument when God commands that every living thing be killed with a sword. Of course, after that, he goes on to list off the groups that are to be killed by having a sword plunged into their hearts. And as far as the phrase utterly destroyed goes, I'm not exactly sure how the person he cites comes to the conclusion that it means just to render them harmless or something. A majority of the Hebrew scholars agree that this phrase is commonly linked with killing an entire group of people. Again, it just seems like special pleading to me. 
So I think we have to be careful when we say that God is endorsing the entire destruction of a people group, when in fact the biblical record shows us that he didn't do that, because that group is still present years later in the biblical record. How we use language is important to us today, it's just as important to the biblical authors. So we we'll always be sure we understand the definition. Does God condone genocide? No, but God does stop evil and he wants to render it utterly harmless. Uh, God doesn't just endorse the destruction of entire people. He commands that his people do it for him. We have shown several times throughout this video that when God says to utterly destroy a group of people, he means to kill every single person and all of the livestock in that particular people. Group. God also allows the transfer of children from one population to another via sexual slavery. God continuously commits immoral acts in the Old Testament that Christians just want to whitewash out of the Bible, just like J-Dubs is doing here. He seems to purposely misunderstand what genocide means, and he imports in incorrect criteria to determine what is a genocide? And the way that J-Dubs describes what a genocide is and the criteria uh, for a genocide, he would have to also claim that the Holocaust was not a genocide. And that just fucking baffles me.